Hello students and welcome to our very first class. For today's discussion, we will be tackling the first chapter of your work text and that is chapter 1, Humanities and the Arts. I will be your instructor. I am Jonna Victoriano. But before we begin with our basic objectives, let us tackle first the featured painting in your title slide. This painting is entitled The Scream by Edward Munch. Edward Munch's painting was created in 1893. It is oil, tempera, pastel, and crayon on cardboard. It has a dimension of 91 centimeters by 73.5 centimeters. And this painting is currently housed in the National Gallery and Munch Museum in Oslo, Norway. We have three basic objectives for this discussion. First, for us to be able to understand the importance of humanities and art appreciation in every individual's life. Our second objective, for us to be able to gain a general knowledge on the different types of arts. And our last objective is to recognize the history of art as well as its functions. Let us start with a basic definition of humanity. When we say humanities, it comes from the Latin word humanus, which means human, cultured, or refined. Humanities is a branch of learning, which is concerned with studying human thoughts, human feelings, and human relationships, and how these three can be individually expressed through different forms of arts. So when we say art, it comprises of different forms, such as painting, sculpture, photography, literature, music, architecture, dance, and the theater. Now, to help us understand as to why art can also be considered as a science, let us use this quote by Dr. Albert C. Barnes. He stated, appreciation of works of art requires organized effort and systematic study. Now, what is the meaning behind this quotation and how is it related to art being also considered as a form of science? Now, there are two keywords that you should remember from this quote. Number one, that art is an organized effort. And number two, that art is a systematic study. Now, the field of art is no different from biological sciences or even social sciences because it is also an organized effort. When we say organized effort, it requires a thorough research. In the field of research, when you have a question that needs an answer, what method do we employ? I hope that you can still remember. What is the method that we employ? You have the scientific method or the scientific process. Now, what are the steps within the scientific method? First and foremost, you always start with a query or a question. Then you continue with RRL or a view of related literature. Then you continue with creating your hypothesis and then your experimentation. Next is data collection and then analysis of data, and then your last step, you have your conclusion. It is also the same within the arts. Whenever an artist wants to create a new piece, for example, he always starts with a question or an idea in mind. What is the subject of the piece? What medium should he use? Watercolor, charcoal, ink, and etc. What elements of art should he include in the piece? What message should he portray in his artwork? He should also conduct a review of related literature, especially on the current trends in the art. During the creation or experimentation process, it is a matter of trial and error for the artist. He will commit mistakes along the creation of the artwork. Some artists even took years for them to be able to present their pieces in public because art requires thorough 
research, it will imply that it is also a systematic study. When we say a system, it means one part cannot work without the other. In the field of art, employing a system or a process throughout the creation is very important for it assures the completion of the piece. Now, after we have defined the term humanities, let us continue with defining the term art. When we say art, it comes from the Latin word arti, which means craftsmanship, skill, mastery of form, and inventiveness. Now, there are two major varieties of art. The first one, we have fine art. Now, what are examples of fine art pieces? The first one, we have David by Michelangelo. And the second example is The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. Now, what is the characteristic of fine art? Fine art pieces are created for aesthetic enjoyment through the senses, specifically visual and auditory. It showcases sophistication. That is why most fine art pieces are displayed in museums or they are being sold in art galleries. Now, the second variety of art is minor art. What are examples of minor art pieces? This lampshade, this tea set is also an example of a minor art piece, and this chair. All of them are examples of minor art pieces. Now, what is the characteristic of minor art? Minor art pieces are used or created for its practical or everyday purpose. Wooden chairs with intricate carvings, tables, porcelain plates and glasses, cabinets, vases, and lamps. Okay, let's have a simple activity before we continue. So let's have this question. Can fine art pieces become minor art and vice versa? Is it a yes or a no? Of course, it's a yes. For example, I bought this 18th century table from an auction. I brought it home and I used it as a dining table because I used it for its practicality from being a fine art piece, it transformed into a minor art piece. But if I eventually decide to display the coffee table in my house, it becomes a fine art piece again because I only want to appreciate it using my sense of sight. Now, aside from the two major varieties of art, which are fine art and minor art, art can also be classified into three. The first one, you have visual art. So when you say visual art, these are artworks which are visual in nature. For example, painting, sculpture, architecture, drawing, and photography. The second classification is performing art. Performing art are forms of art where the artist utilizes their own body, face, and presence as medium. For example, theater and dance. Our last classification is literary art. Literary art primarily centers in creative writing. Our examples, we have poems, sonnet, and ballad. Of course, an artwork will be nothing without the man or the woman behind it. That is why we have our artist. The word artist comes from the French word the artiste or from the Spanish word artista, which means performer. When you say artist, it refers to a person who is engaged in one or more of any broad spectrum of activities related to art. Now, when did art start then? The history of art involves the whole history of mankind because mankind has been practicing art since time immemorial. So we can say that art started at the same time that humans have existed. 
we can divide the history of art into two phases. The first one is during the ancient times. So what were the purposes of art for our ancestors? The first purpose, art served as a sign of communication to the unknown being, may it be a god or a goddess. Its second purpose, art served as a form of adoration for their deity, for their ruler, or deceased ancestor. They represented their world through visual images.